Hey everybody, it's the Trout. Hope you're having a great day. If you're new to this channel, I interview musicians, I should say very talented musicians, located all over the planet. You're going to find out some independent artists that I hope more people get to listen to them and discover them and listen to their music. And then you're going to know about some of the famous people that we got coming up on the show that get to tell their story about their musical careers. Today's episode is about two guys that have been friends for a long time that have started making music, and I should say really cool music. It's Chris Saunders and his producer, Signon. They're out of New York City. Well, one of them is. <laughs> they met in New York City, but now one of them lives in New York and the other one lives in LA. So they do cross country production. I got to hear Chris Saunders and I thought he was really unique in his songwriting. But what's really cool about these two is the difference in their personalities and their backgrounds. Chris comes from a Jamaican and Scottish heritage and Signon got his start writing beats. And now they put some music together that I think you're gonna like. But they got some projects coming up that are very interesting that I think you're going to hear, like to hear about. We talk about their music, we talk about how they're developing their new project, and we even talk about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. What? <laughs> so, before we get to Chris Saunders' music, remember, if you like this channel, please subscribe to it. If you like this episode, give us a big thumbs up. We'd appreciate it very much. So next up is Chris Saunders' music. I think you're going to really like it. And you know why? Because that's next on The Trout Show. The one thing that really caught my ear, so to speak, Chris, was I, I listened to Ghost. I hear Okay, I watched you play it live, and I said, oh, I like that. I like the chord pattern. Of course, I know you used, I could, all my guitars behind me, but used a capo. I'm looking at stuff because I've been playing lead guitar for so long. But then I read about you, and that really was really the thing that got me was, here's, here's somebody, although you're a native New Yorker, Jamaican, and what's the other Caribbean? Was another island involved in this or American or what was the whole no, story behind so, it? Sort of an island, uh, Scotland. Scotland. Oh. Yeah. Dad's Jamaican, mom's Scottish. Uh, they met at the UN, so in Geneva through a mutual friend. So. Oh, wow. That's that's how it started. And then, and then you came about. Yeah. Well, my brother first, the golden child, and then me. Yeah. Is that it? Just the two of you? Oh, uh, we have a couple step brothers and a half brother, but that's an even longer story. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, and I'll get say we'll get into when you guys met and all that stuff because I know you you perform on this. Is it the new album just come out, or is it, it been out for a while? The one that's we, on on your on your uh, on your website. Um, the album, the website, yeah, Liquid Therapy's been out for a while. Okay, <laughs> up there the yeah. website, um, and that was a, another collaboration between Segnon and myself. So, yeah. Um, that one was more, you know, I, I'm writing a lot of songs um, up with my guitar and then Segnon, the genius, is like translating that into like fully produced things. And then there was a few songs that he just produced from beginning to end. So, and Segnon, I want to get to that because I yeah. I really want to, I've had people ask me to produce stuff for him, but, you know, and you know, I'm in the same boat you are. You're in LA and he's in New York. You know, it's kind of like, are you going to play for my trip to go? You know, I can't really sit, I can't sit in my <laughs> office and produce. Yeah, man, could you go back in and do this track? And yeah, so I understand that. So, um, but that that really what caught my eye, Chris, is and then the music, and I'm just going to tell you up front, I'm not a rap guy, I'm not a hip guy, hip hop that much, but the way you guys put it together really was cool. I mean, it just really sounded great. And I know a lot of artists that and it, it music business has completely changed but you know you're not somebody chris that you can pigeonhole 
which is is a good thing and a bad thing. You know yes. what I mean? So, and I'm not telling something you probably don't already know. <laughs> so just kind of lead me through the fact that, you know, a little bit about how you started and all that stuff. And then, you know, the next thing you're playing in, and I was, um, you got the band that used to have, is the 11th Ward still together? Or is that, are you guys still gigging? We're on our like 77th version of the band. <laughs> uh, I, I just, I tour under Chris Saunders now. Um, with some light maintenance of the 11th Ward social media, but yeah. Um, but to your point, um, you know, I, I have that diverse uh, background with my parents being Jamaican and Scottish. Um, you know, you know, as you know, Jamaica's a huge music nation, despite Love, its small I'm a status. reggae guy. Love reggae. Uh, I, I was right. I was pretty much raised on it, but, um, and then my mom's side of the family, the Scottish side, uh, all of her brothers and even my cousins, they all play guitar. So I was kind of, raised in this atmosphere right um and it took me a while to really to get like into this i started writing in 2005 oh my you are a late bloomer yeah very late um but you know really helped that uh i hate to say this but i had a girlfriend at the time (laughs) when i first started writing it was all you know happy lovey-dovey stuff (laughs) and then i actually i started working so i like you know, you know, you know how it is, you know, you don't have time as much time as you'd like to do the music. Yeah. And then, then we broke up and then the music came pouring. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm going to draw a silver lining on a failed relationship, <laughs> that's it. You started writing in 2005. Did yeah. you, did you self-taught yourself how to play guitar or did you have somebody helping you out? Uh, a little bit of both, uh, in like middle school, I took some lessons, but, uh, one day the uh the teacher calls my mom says this is a waste of my time and your money (laughs) um because i was always at the gym either playing basketball or watching the basketball games high school games so i was 100 like well say 98 percent basketball and and when i was younger so that got ended within months and uh and then i had a friend uh, a mutual friend of segnon's and i uh tamer who saw my guitar in my house he's like you have a guitar, like, let's, you know, let's jam. And, but he essentially retaught me a few things. And, right. and then, you know, that's like, that was like the early age stages of the, the internet. So I can look up chords and started kind of teaching myself that way. When did you start writing though? Uh, I mean, were yeah. you writing, were you writing right away? Would you just said, because you know, a lot of people play no. guitar or play an instrument, but they don't write. Yeah, no, no. I, um, when I first started playing, I, 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 don't let me just say this. I don't really love performing. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you the story of when I first played in front of like people, but um, I would just play sometimes in front of my high school friends, you know, when Tamer mm-hmm. retaught me some stuff and it was mm-hmm. covers. It was, you know, I loved um, Oasis, Wonderwall, Air Clapton, yeah. Tears in Heaven, Bob Marley, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, and I, it was literally for years, even going to college, it was just like, you know, Save Tonight, Eagle Eye Cherry. It was like four or five songs that I would play. Right. So you like then, you like doing studio work. Um, I like it because I don't have to have like tons of eyes on me. <laughs> That's what heightens my anxiety. <laughs> well, you know, I think going to studio and saying, "Now you're a producer, you understand this." You've probably been in a lot of people. Some people yeah. get more they get more anxious in the studio than they do performing live. Because I mean, it's yeah. you're, you, you've probably seen that. I'm sure. And, oh yeah. And so. You, uh, you got to get used to it. And, it's, it's a very and, different muscle. It's a different muscle entirely. It's exactly yeah. right. And I think I think th- there are artists who love to do, who love live performances, and you get them in the studio, and they're just they're they're uncomfortable. You know, I've worked with a lot of artists who, who um, it's the repetition of takes, doing it over and over again. That doesn't that doesn't jive with them. They're more yeah. like in the moment, the reaction from the crowd, just kind of feeling it and going mm-hmm. off of it. And not trying to like work to okay that was great but let's perfect it let's tweak that let's do that seventy more times <laughs> I don't like that as much so it varies it really just depends. I also love going to the studio, and and the people that probably don't like it where you said take seventy takes I kind of get off on that a little bit to a certain level, hmm. and, and I and it, it's got to be difficult and because so you don't like performing, but you like going to studio. And I, I really believe anymore that seems to be the way of the world a lot. Now, but what is it you want to do? I mean, you got a great producer there. He didn't come in because you suck. 
<laughs> no, he, he he loves sucky music. No, um, <laughs> Only when uh, I'm a sucky artist. <laughs> um, no, I mean, so I, I do it. Like I, you know, I perform anyway. Obviously, as you said, you know, earlier the the pandemic really put a lot of artists, you know, yeah. careers on hold. Um, but you know, I've I've gotten past the in early stages. Like I, I remember the first time I went to perform, I was just bar hopping in Hoboken, New Jersey, with a coworker. And we were on our third or fourth bar, so clearly in good shape. <laughs> and we walk into one that has an open mic going. And he, and he's he had heard me play before. He's like, "You should, you should play." Like, oh yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Get, just, get up there and play, Chris. Get up, play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I tell him like, "Sure," because uh, I, I figure by the time it gets to me, like we'll be out of there. You know, go to our fifth, sixth bar. Yeah. And he comes back from the the host and's like, "You're up next." My heart stops. Meanwhile, there was a girl that I was interested in, like at the front of the bar. Like I didn't, we weren't there together. Like she was just there, gotcha. coincidentally. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. get up on, uh, I get up on the chair. I got the guitar on my knee, and I'm playing the two songs I know the best, which is uh, "Tears in Heaven" and "Wonderwall." But because my leg is shaking and my guitar is on my leg, I'm missing, <laughs> I'm messing up everything. Yeah, because "Tears in Heaven" is not the easiest thing in the world to play. I mean, well, it's also now we should play at a bar that's trying to have people <laughs> like up, like upbeat. Um, and I get off stage and I'm I get a drink and for the next half hour my my hand is just shaking with my drink. I'm just spilling. That's funny. So it's been that was like 2009, 10. So like since then, yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable on stage now. So what's your? I'm getting ahead of the game here a little bit. But what do you want to do? What's your goal? I mean, ideally, yeah, I think making a career out of music would be what I want to do. Sure. You know, I, I love creating music. I love, you know, affecting people with, with my music. Um, and, you know, you know, doing what you love, like everyone wants to do that. And most people don't. So, you know, tr trying to get there. So how did you two meet? I mean, here you got a producer down there. How did, how did you meet with them, Sigdon? Well, so we've known each other since, I don't know, 2000, 2001. Um, now you always been, have you been, are you from New York or are you in LA? I'm from New York. I'm from okay, New York. So, um, right. so yeah, so I. Two, two, actually, 2000 when we were born, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as okay, guys. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so a friend of mine um, from college went to, uh, went to high school with Chris. Okay. And, uh, and so we, we um, basically, I think I want to say like the, after freshman year or so, uh, I started getting into making music. Uh, early, early days using uh, Fruity Loops. Now it's called FL Studio. It's yeah, now, I, much, much more professional sounding yeah. uh, than Fruity Loops. Um, yeah. But in the early days of Fruity Loops, like when it was Fruity Loops 2, I think it was. Now I don't even know. They're on Fruity Loops 20, 21, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was literally Fruity Loops 2. And so um, early on, I kind of got into making beats just for fun. Right. Uh, me and our mutual friend Orpheus. Um, and I was and doing it too. Congrats. Chris, Chris got into it too. Chris got into it a little bit too. That was, this is so. Well you said you were using FL Studio. Is that what you're using? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and um, and so I always kind of made made music. I always made beats for myself, for other artists, for my brother, for singers, just for anyone who kind of you know needed beats. They weren't very good, uh, you know, but 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 it was what I could do at the time. Um, and. And over the over the years, Chris kind of started to pick up his music thing. He started playing more and more. And I don't know what year it was that we eventually started collaborating. Um, yeah, but it was it was on it was before it was before the Liquid Therapy album. Yeah, um, that, that was, was like twenty fourteen. So it must have been like late two thousands, right? Sounds about Maybe. right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we we recorded a bunch of stuff that we haven't done anything with. It's just kind of sitting on your computer on your hard drive. But that's true. We, which so we tell me what. I, here's a question I've always had because I follow different people on music places and all that, and they're always talking about doing beats. Back then, what were people using the beats for? I mean, anything that could just throw it on something. I mean, there had to be some. Was there any money in it? I mean, now everybody yeah, I mean, wants to do beats, but I think they're selling them. I think people are buying them for different different things to use them for. Yeah, I mean, early on, I sold a couple of beats uh, early on, you know, like 50 bucks, like really, really cheap stuff. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of websites back then around for you to upload your beats and, you know, you could put your beat tag on it um, so that people wouldn't just steal it. Um, and, uh, and you know, I sold a couple of beats that way, um, but I, I mainly worked with with 
uh, artists that I like really respected and wanted to work with on like longer term projects and build like albums with. So right. I looked at like at those early days as basically me like honing my skills and and refining what it is to actually work with artists because making beats and being a producer uh there's overlap but they aren't this exact same thing you know um yeah because that piece of that human piece of having to interact with another human and work with them it's an entirely different skill set than just making beats um and then also like how you actually produce music when you're thinking about making a beat that just sounds good to, to, for someone to listen to as an individual beat versus making a song where there's got to be space for for vocalists and there's got to be it's got to be arranged you got to think about okay where the chorus is going to come where are we going to do a bridge and so that took some time as well so just kind of like this beat sounds good it's catchy it's hot someone might want to rap on it um right and so so but in the early days there wasn't a ton of ton of money in it it was more just looking at it as building the experience you know maybe maybe if i break even on um you know on some gear i want to pick up you know if i want to pick up like a midi <laughs> keyboard it, you know at the time actually it was less about MIDI keyboards and more about actual keyboards because the sounds were, that was when I was looking at like the Triton and the Phantom and you know, oh, yeah. actual keyboards. Nowadays, you know, I rely on my MIDI and just have everything in, in VSTs and, you know, with my DAW. But, uh, but that was it at the time I was trying to buy, see if I could get, you know, a sure mic, a solid, a solid <laughs> mic that I could record into, you know, yeah. a solid yeah. interface, you know, yeah. the, M-box, the Pro Tools M box. So I could get that, you know, uh, set. So it was really just about breaking even. I've learned over the years is like, there's an element of production that is like, um, you know, uh, it's it's diplomacy. It's also like therapy. You know, um, it, it's 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 coming together in a way um, because I, I've you know I've worked in the past where I've kind of pushed my ideas as producer. This is what right. I think. I'm the yeah. one in, in charge. I made this beat. I had all these ideas in mind when I made it. You know, uh, and I'm putting it on the artist. Um, that usually doesn't always work out that well because you can hear it if they're not, if they don't get it, if they're not into it. You can mm. hear it in performance. Um, you know, they don't really, if they don't fully grasp it, or they, they're just not into it. You know, the audience will will know, um, and you'll know as as a producer. You know, like it wasn't quite right. Um, and then it can be that way around where you kind of give just okay, here's it, do whatever you want with it. And then I've had times where I've kind of been like, oh, I didn't really hear that. That's not really exactly what I had in mind as a producer but the vocalist kind of did whatever they want to do with it. And so what I've learned is kind of that, that marriage of, um, of, of my thoughts, my ideas, my initial impressions, but then also being malleable and like kind of working with artists and what is it that you want to express? How, how is it that you want to, uh, what, what is it you're hearing? You know? Um, so more, more often than I'll listen, I'll, I'll, I'll create something and I'll say, what do you hear? Because I know exactly what it is that I hear, but I want, I don't want to force my ideas before I get their initial kind of reaction. Like, which, what was the first thing you felt when you heard this? Um, we, did that, that, we, did, we did that with Countdown as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. When did you guys record the first stuff together? I mean, you said you were doing it for a while, but when did it get real? I mean, I think, well, Liquid Therapy was the first album we did. And when did it, when was that released? That was 2014. Okay. Um, I don't really recall releasing any singles before then. We, we've released stuff after. Yeah, I think we recorded there, a bunch before that just kind of loose yeah. stuff but we never i don't think we fully you know because we didn't have a project in mind i don't think we like fully took the songs from like oh this is record your guitar and to like build it into a full song i think mm-hmm. that really happened with with the liquid therapy project so so he's been a friend for years for a long time how was he as a producer did he help you i gotta go everybody <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> Um, Here, we'll just kind of mute. I'll mute him. Hold on. A second. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the stuff that Segnon was saying about you know, you know, developing as a producer. Um, I think I was lucky enough to you know catch him. You know, I, we we didn't start working when he started making beats in the early 2000s. We started a little later. So every time I've been in the studio with with Segnon, um, you know, I feel like well, one, we've kind of evolved together in certain ways, mm-hmm. but he's always been able to you know, suggest things, you know, get more out of me, you know, you know, like push your, push your vocals harder here. Like don't do falsetto, like, you know, really insult type of things that, you know, really bring out, you know, what the uh, instrumentation is doing. So uh, we had a pretty fruitful relationship. I think we've made a lot of good music uh, over the years. So oh, yeah. Segnon, why did you want to work with him? I mean, um, you, ob- well, you obviously, I mean, you could have been in friend and said, okay, I'll go in the studio with you or whatever we're going to do this at to help you out. But you you you're a serious producer. 
So what was it about Chris that you said, oh, I got to do this project? So, so a couple of things, like one, I mean, obviously there's got to be a baseline of just like talent, right? Like, you know, and, and, and liking the actual music and liking the actual lyrical content and what you got to say. And Chris right. has always had uh, really, really great songwriting. He's always been someone who um, I also just connect with as a human, which I think mm. is the biggest part um, because, you know, if, if you're, if you're going to be in the studio, it's going to be, it's a commitment, you know, mm -hmm. it's time you're going to be in there hours and hours working on the song while you're recording it then post-production, then mixing, you know, it's, 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 and in promotion, it's, it's, you know, it's a relationship. It's, it's, it's um, a job. Yeah. 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 It really is. And so you've got to be on the same kind of wavelength and also just vibe, just want to actually be around them. Mm -hmm. um, and then musically, you know, I think uh, it was also just like a, a challenge for me and something different and pushed that pushed me in a different kind of way. Cause I've been focusing primarily on at the time, primarily on hip hop, pop, R and B. Um, I'd done a couple of, I think maybe I'd done some film scoring stuff. Mm. Um, but, you think? but of course you have. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to think of the time around 24. <laughs> and by then, yeah, I think I'd done a couple of film scores. Uh, but, but yeah, you know, it just I, it was a, a a new challenge, a new kind of uh, new way of uh, exploring things artistically and creatively that I hadn't uh, pursued before. And so I, I was just eager to see, okay, what can we do together? I've seen Chris perform live a bunch. I've seen him with his band. Um, what does that translate like, uh, you know, in a in studio setting? What's that going to sound like on an actual recording? And what's that going to sound like with my influence? Like, how can how can I, you know, uh, bolster that? Like, not go in there and change it and say, okay, forget what you've done in the past. Now you're working with me. But like, but build <laughs> upon what it is that he's been doing. But I, I, uh, I think in a way, um, yeah, you haven't actively done that, but I think you have rubbed off on me. And like, just, just from the, the, the way you produce and the stuff you produce, which is like phenomenal. Um, you know, like Go On. Go On is like a very, very R&B song, mm -hmm. um, which I hadn't really done before. And well, I listen to your album and it's, it's I, I don't take this offensively, it's kind of all over the place. But that's what I liked about it. I mean, I, I, it's what I liked about it because I played a couple of tunes uh, on that album. My wife says, I don't like this song. And I, well, that's okay because you, you didn't like a lot of stuff I did too either. But, but then I play something else. Oh, I like that song. You know, yeah. and, and I, I've already got my mindset. When you said Jamaica, I went, okay, man, he's going to have some little reggae stuff here going on. You he know? had one song with a part of reggae in there. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, that's, as I said earlier, that's what makes you unique. You have your own style. And and so this liquid therapy was out for you several years ago. Have you, um, have you matured in your songwriting? Uh, no, no, it's always been amazing. But um <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, I've, yeah, definitely. You know, it just by the nature of getting older, yeah, I think you have to. Um, yeah. But I've also had not just music, other music, new music that's come out that influences me. You know, I started out, you know, Bob Marley, obviously, and early on Eric Clapton, but then like Coldplay, I'm a big Coldplay fan, um, and like that yeah. started influencing me as well. Um, but then you have even newer artists like Chronix. Like this is a reggae, rap reggae kind of artist. He's mm -hmm. amazing. And like, I feel like, you know, something that you kind of heard in this song is similar to that to Countdown. And of course, as you know, the, the Go On song I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, that was what the file was titled that, that Segnon made. And that's how I made the song, right? Like it was just based off of that. And I think um, instead of using my own personal um, experience all the time, I've been matured into being able to use thoughts, ideas, you know, and other things to, to, to write songs. So Segnon, in, in your um, business world, so to speak, is your favorite thing to, to help rap artists or do you, I mean, you have a, a stable of different artists that you, obviously Chris doesn't do that, that so much. I mean, you had some rap in some of the songs, which I thought sounded good. What what's your favorite thing to do? Not not necessarily the performer, but if you if somebody comes up with you and says, "I this is what I do," is I what kind of genre do you like in producing? I, I you know I, it's I hate to cop out by sitting saying like I it doesn't I don't really have one in particular. Okay, uh, but it's true. I, I think it, it depends on the artist. I think I think that I like to work with artists more than I like to work on particular genres mm. um, because um, I just worked on a track a, a few days ago with an electro pop group and it was super inspiring and very very different and you know and something that I I, I loved exploring 
Um, but then I also worked with a hip hop artist a couple of days before that. And that was inspiring in a different way. Um, and me and Chris are working on other music that's going to come out in, uh, in probably next year. Um, that's different than Hopefully. anything we've done before. It's kind mm. of uh, so. So to me, it's it's less about particular genres. There's there's I, I think I get in modes every once in a while. If, if I'm in a if I'm in a mode where I'm like, oh, I'm really I really need something high energy, you know, right. and, and maybe, maybe I'm in the mood for some like high energy and even within genres, there's sub genres. Like, so within hip hop, it might be, you know, a very like, uh, you know, anthemic kind of like loud 808 heavy booming mm. Southern kind of influence kind of track. Uh, or maybe I'm in a more pensive, thoughtful, you know, more jazzy, you know, nineties inspired, you know, boom bap hip hop kind of track. Right. Um, uh, you know, or R and B. So it, it really, it could depend on the mood that I'm in in that particular day. But, uh, but overall it's more, it's usually I get more inspired by a particular artist than I do by genres. Um, unless I'd say, unless there's something that I just haven't done before and I go, huh, I've never tried doing that. You know, I've never tried blending, you know, heavy metal and, you know, country music and trap music. <laughs> Let me try that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's see what it sounds like. Just, just to, so that that might be interesting, but, but usually it's more like artists I get excited about just particular artists and, and concepts. If there's, someone's comes up with a concept or some, something that just kind of seems exciting or interesting, I'm like, okay, let's, let's do that. We'll but you know, as a not. producer, you can do that. Artists can't. I yeah. mean, you, you, the thing that you have going for you is you have all these different people you can work with and have that ability and say, oh man, I, I want to, I want to work with uh, this kind of genre. Second on with you, what do you see with Chris? I mean, here you're the guy, you, you got it. It, it with the record industry the way it is. And do you feel that, and this affects you, Chris, what's the best way to do this now? I mean, do you, do you want to search for a record deal? I mean, do you want a label to own you or do you, you know, do you want to just have a gazillion, you know, I'm going to be on Spotify and people, you know, listen to me a million times. I made 53 cents, but you know, wh what do you see as a professional in your, in your business? What do you see coming? How do you, how do you work with somebody like Chris? Well, it's it's interesting timing because and me and Chris have been speaking about this. I think I think that the the industry, it's funny that the record labels are making a lot of money off of streaming, right? Like they're they're doing really, really well. Yeah, they're not um, paying anybody, it's, they're making a ton of money. Yeah. 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 The model the model works really, really well for the industry. Yeah, it works for them. For yeah. yeah. For a while they it, it, you know, I think when like, you know, Napster and on and, and you know, kind of pirating music hit, uh the music industry took a hit. Um, and then when streaming kind of took on uh, came on. Um, the labels have now kind of now they've made more money. They're making more money than they were, um, you know, in, in the early 2000s. They're making a ton of money now, um, but the artists aren't right. And, uh, and and in the meantime, you also got artists in these 360 deals, right? Where like now the labels are getting a piece of everything. Now they're getting a piece of the touring. They're getting a piece of your merch. They're getting a piece of any appearances that you make. Um, so, so they're getting all of it. So where it used to be, you you did the deal with the record label and everything else was yours, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, besides they, your they management get, get, age and all that stuff, yeah. See, exactly. I didn't know. I didn't know they were doing that. That's they're doing that now. A three sixty deal. So you you make an appearance at a at a bar and, and get a you know uh, fifty thousand dollars to show up because you're you know you're famous. They get a piece of that. Yeah, you know like you do a commercial oh. for Arby's, they get a piece of that. Um, so uh, it's 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 been a model that's not really worked very well for artists. Um, it's worked exceptionally well for the labels, and they're making tons of money. Um, so what's what I've been kind of uh, doing lately, and 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 Chris and I have been speaking a lot about this, and he's kind of delving into it is. Kind of, um, you know, Web three uh, and music NFTs, uh, mm. which is kind of a, a new space that's been emerging the last, you know, year, two years or so. Yeah, uh, it's still it's still in its infancy, and it's definitely not where it's going to be. Um, but um, but it allows artists to be able to sell music directly to to fans, to collectors, to consumers, um, mm. at you know at whatever rate that they choose. Um, no label necessary. Um, it's you know it's it's using cryptocurrency. Um, but, um, but a lot of artists are very, very successful in that space and allows them the ability to kind of, uh, you know, uh, they'll sell these NFTs that can add different, what they call utility. So if you own the NFT, maybe you get access to, um, to screenings for performances, or you get access to, mm -hmm. um, VIP back, back backstage, or mm -hmm. you can get to have conversation with the artist when they're working on the record, things like that. Um, so it allows a lot of opportunity for, for artists to kind of actually make generate some money. I've, I've sold some NFTs and made more money off of NFTs than I made off of all the streams that I've done combined. That's amazing uh, to me. Uh, so, it really is. 
Yeah. And so it's, it's, um, you know, I've, I've worked with artists who, I, an artist who, who sold a music video for $50,000, um, you know, uh, so it's, it's, it's a real thing that has real possibility of, uh, of re-empowering artists and bringing back that artistic sovereignty and sovereignty and not having to go through, um, the industry machine. Um, so that, I, I see there being a lot of potential, the project that me and Chris are working on, um, for, for next year, it's one that combines both music and animation. Um, oh, cool. which, which, which I think, which works very well for also like the web three space, which has worked for a lot of visual artists and uh, who sold a lot of work. Beeple famously sold a piece of his for $69 million um, <laughs> last year. So um, NFTs so, yeah. are kind of like crypto to me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what are your next steps? It's working on this next project with the uh, animation. Is that your next thing you're working on right now, Chris? Um, yeah, we're, we're intermittently doing that. We have a lot of, of a long way to go, but the music is close, which is great. Really exciting. Um, the animation is like the big thing that's going to take, you know, a longer period of time. Can you tell me anything about the concept? Uh, yeah, why not? We, we don't have any, uh, agreements, right? Signa? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the project is called, uh, the man with no name. And it is a, Wait a minute, that was Clint Eastwood. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I wish I had known that before I named it, but <laughs> we're keeping it now. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's trademarked. It, so there you go. Well, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah, but it's anyway. also it is also a, a Western style animation project, and the music is all like country Western rock kind of stuff. So again, as Segnan said, very different from anything we either of us has done, and uh, we're working with another producer co-producing who. Um, you know, you were talking about doing everything on digitally. Yeah. And he has done a lot of orchestral work just with the on the digital side. He's done a lot of live instruments that he's put in and got other musicians to, to record for us. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it's it's how I pictured the, some of these songs to be in my head, as you had said earlier. And he's and it, and it was just us sitting on a, a, a Zoom like this and me going, <laughs> like you know just humming <laughs> stuff and he was able to actualize that so uh yeah it's so it's you're really and so segnon you're producing it or helping produce it yeah yeah me and um the, he mentioned uh mike mike is a guitarist and also co-producer on it and it's funny because we've done the entire thing remotely right like i don't think we've even done one session we met up for beers once i think in new york uh I, maybe i year. came to you i came to you because you were in town once i recorded re-recorded vocals you know right. that was just to clean some stuff up but the three of us have never the three of us have not actually sat in a, a room together to work on it numerous I think zoom that's calls. cool i think that's cool yeah. um but it's it's yeah it's it's a really it's i think it's 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 a very ambitious project just because of the um it's a, it's a whole full story uh and the songs kind of flow into one another it's very very cinematic and then the animation piece of it um and then just again just taking on a different style musically for for all of us has been a challenge like when you asked before about genres like you know this this is the kind of thing that just i love this a big ambitious project with a vision a story um this, this is what gets me excited and i walk by the river listen to the old man play i went down Well, that's it for this episode of The Trout Show. I hope you liked it very much. If you need to know more about Chris Saunders, just go to his website, chrissaundersmusic.com. You know mine, it's thetroutshow.com. Until next time, remember, people, it's only rock and roll. But we love it. See ya. <laughs>